Yo. Oh shit, my shit almost fell right now. <laughs> Request to join new. We got a good. We're gonna have a good episode today, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you're familiar with the underground, you're gonna know who this is. You may or may not know. There he is. Where's he? Yo, how's he going? Historian, what's going on, bro? I'm good. How about yourself? My man, doing good, man. Got done skating, gonna go skate again. Bought my little sister a basketball. Bought my little brother a toy and shit. Oh, word? Yeah. What'd you buy? Uh, I bought an Android 17 action figure. Android 17, that's Dragon Ball? Yeah. yeah. Dragon Ball, that's what's up, bro. Yeah, man. I'm feeling it. How have you been, bro? It's been a, it's been a while. It's been some time. Been some time, man. Evil Emperor, sir, but man, all love, man. Hell yeah, bro. Um, what is it? Uh, uh, the I I want to say the first first song we did was like back in 2018. I want to say for my first, not even my first. I don't even know what number mixtape I had, but that was for solo fight singles to the dark side right i'm pretty sure i wasn't even ready for it i wasn't even ready to to break down our history like that but pretty much we've got some joints in you know what i mean dude we gotta work again man no we definitely we definitely do and speaking of which you uh uh you just recently dropped an album so yeah so uh, uh tell me a little bit about that well mr triggers I think so, right? It's the new, the newest one, the newest one you just dropped. Oh, general, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, it was a beat tape I put together because my dad told me to put together a beat tape, and uh, I basically just looked through a whole bunch of samples and stuff, put some skits on there, made a little bit of bread. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it was for the creative mind, you know what I mean? Uh, just basically just putting in scraps together to make a big project. You know, it was for school, too, you know, to represent that I'm a general from Washington Prep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's dope. Um, in terms of, like, how you go about digging, is there is there a certain kind of, like, do you – do you like get in like how do like is there a certain process like do you have to get inspired like do you just wake up and and find samples like how like in terms of making this recent album uh general how did how did that come about um shoot my dad was like man dude you're a producer man you love alchemist and mad lib you gotta make a beat tape man for them and I was like, for sure, man, I got to make it in like a week. So I put it together. Uh, I used the same cover for my demo reel. I'm a voice actor, by the way, on two video games. Oh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, that's basically how it worked. You just said you was a voice actor for two video games, like so nonchalant that you got to break it down. So we talking like Skyrim, Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> what, what games are those? I'm on a game called Dead Frontier 2, and I'm on a game called Ready or Not. Dead Frontier 2 is a uh, is a zombie game mm -hmm. where I play a zombie survivor, and Ready or Not is a, a, a SWAT tactical first person shooter. Wow, I've never I've never heard of those games. Like, where can they find those and play those games at? On Steam on PC. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't have, uh, I don't play on PC, but I, that kind of seems like the wave everyone's kind of, like, been on and kind of going more towards is the PC. Yeah, man. I got, I definitely got to tap in that. That sounds dope. Um, when, uh, when did those come out? When did those games come out? 
I think Dead Frontier 2 came out in like 2018, 2019, and uh, Ready or Not is still in the early access. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where are you from originally? Uh, uh, I was born in Inglewood, raised in South Central LA. Wow. And now I live in Gardena. That's rich LA history, man. That's literally like, for people who don't know, going from Inglewood to fucking South Central to Gardena is like going from World War II to Korea to like Vietnam or something like that. Yeah, that's man. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I have I actually have a family in South Central. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty tight, bro. How 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 would you describe growing up um, in those cities? Uh, it was pretty safe. Um, was I got pressed like two times by gangbangers, but that was only twice. Uh, I went I went to school in Inglewood for a little bit. Then I went to school in South Central. Um, graduated valedictorian and stuff. Went to college at UC Davis in Sacramento. Um, left for a little bit, and uh, yeah. Wow, that that's dope, man. Like, it's so crazy that I knew you were from LA, but I just didn't know like where exactly. Because I think I remember like, weren't you like in some newspaper or something like that? Yeah, I was. I was in LA Times News twice, uh, one for a UCLA tour and the other one for me. Um, I got uh, I got an interview from Teresa Watanabe, and uh, <laughs> um, basically uh, she wanted to like shed light on the fact that I was a voice actor, a music producer, a streamer. The, a scholar, a football player, track runner, uh, um, ASB president, everything, man. That, that's wild. That's that's really like putting, like that's really, you know that that's really respectable to to kind of have like wear that many hats. You know what I mean? That's yeah. That's wild, bro. So I don't I don't think I've I. I've seen whatever article. I think I read that article when it came out because that was like a few years back already, right? The um, yeah, like like 2019. Mm -hmm. That's wild. I, I remember um, the homie Float Lucid. He he's the one who sent me that article, and he was like, "Yo, like um, something like is it." Isn't that, isn't that like the producer you work with? Like he's in the fucking New York Times or something. I was like bugged out. I was like, yeah, wow. Yeah, man. That, you don't really see, like that's hilarious, bro. You don't really see that shit. It's kind of like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, did you even yeah, know Nick who interviewed or whoever interviewed her? Like, did you know them? Like, how did they even get in contact with you? They knew me from ninth grade. And they wanted to know if I actually if I actually kept straight A's throughout all my school years. And they so, yeah. You did keep straight A's. Kept straight A's, man. That's wild. How do you how do you grow up in fucking Inglewood in South Central? <laughs> and like when you said I grew up pretty safe, like what does that mean? Because like those aren't safe cities, you know. Like so. Were you just like you just stayed away from all the street shit? Stayed away from all the street shit, man. I was a nerd. Uh, I still am a nerd, actually, man. Uh, <laughs> never gang banged. That's never did drugs. I do weed now, though. Okay, that's because it's legal. But yeah, oh. yeah, that that's that's cool. Um, yeah, because a lot of people would would front. They'd be like, they. You know, some people they they might have not have even been a part of none of that shit and be like, oh, you know, but the streets kept calling and all this yeah. shit. Yeah. I, I don't know. That that's really dope, man. Like, yeah. that's why when you said it was pretty safe, I'm like, I know he's not talking about the cities, bro, because those are wild. Like my cousin stays in South Central and he got pressed a few times and he's like seen wild, 
about shit. So I think it's really great that you could be from places to where it's just labeled like, oh, you can't make it out that city or people like just put stereotypes on it. Like, oh, he's from here. Oh, well, like he's just going to end up a fucking, you know, a Foot Locker employee or some shit at the most, you know, and you already over here in the in the newspaper, you know, yeah, like man. crazy, bro. I, you know, shout out to you. Like, I think that's really dope. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, dude. No, no problem, man. Um, how did you start uh, making beats? Um, listening to Alchemist, Madlib, Derringer. It was about 2017 where I was like. Man, I want to get into this, man. And, like, my first two beats were kind of whack, you know. But uh, uh, I started looking for more samples, perfecting my craft and shit, and looking for skits and album covers and doing research and stuff. And, yeah, it's, it, like, it, it, like, like, it all worked out. Is there, like, a, a certain beat? Because I have, I have a beat to where I knew for a fact, like, that's how... That's what got me into like, oh, if I could make beats like this, I'd want to. Is there a beat like that for you where you heard like, I don't know, uh, like Ajax or like the Dudley Boys, you know, or, or something like that that made you want to say like, oh, okay, like I want to do this? It was probably Rex Ryan by Derringer wow. and, and Sputnik Webb by Alchemist. And uh, probably Smoke Interlude or whatever interlude by Mad Lib that really made me want to get into producing because it sounded so good, man. Like, I couldn't help it, man. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. so, you, so you would say Mad Lib, Alchemist, were you, are those like your biggest uh, inspirations, influences? Yes. And Nicholas Craven. Nicholas and uh, Sadu Gold. Sadu Gold? Yeah. That's what's up. Um... Who was the first artist that you worked with? Probably Danielson and Smooth. Word? Yeah, they, they they gave my beats a chance, man. Uh, I was like 18 or 17 when I dropped the more, the first song on Making History Saturday. And, uh... And, uh... Yeah, like they gave my beats a chance. You just sent <laughs> like how did how did you even like contact them? Like was it over Twitter, Instagram, or did you just shoot them beats in the email? It was through Twitter. And at first I talked to like the manager of whatever label and he was like, Yeah man, shoot your shot and I was like, For sure. And uh and uh, I sent them the beats through email and then it was like, yo, this is hard, man. I rap over it. And I was like, for sure, man. And they didn't. So is that, I know what track you're talking about. So is that your song or did they end up using that for their albums or anything like that? Oh, it's my song. It's, it's my song. So they literally just sent it to you and said, you like, this is your, like, we'll ju they would just do the features for you? Yeah, it was it was wicked, man. I was so young and so happy. Dude, you know how lucky that is? Like that. <laughs> because let me tell you, usually how this happens, maybe not for everybody, but usually what happens is a bigger name artist, if they get a beat that no one knows, they'll end up putting it on their album, not pay you, maybe not even credit you, but they for damn sure ain't gonna let you have that song like if it's yours because that's just not how, how it works like if you're a bigger name artist it doesn't make sense for them to just give you a track versus you give it to them you know you get what i mean like yeah i, I feel thought, you you literally hit the fucking like uh life lottery bro as far as, like, yeah man shit. that is wild bro like, like right now Mr. Triggers is gonna have 19 features, man. Who 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 are some of those features? Sleep Sinatra, just to name a few. Jay Nice, Rush, Blood Blixing, uh, King the Cunning, 
uh, Jedi Knight, uh, uh, Mantis, the Mizma, um, uh, AWOL, the Mind Rider, just to name a few. Wow. That's like, that's super interesting because there's very, I can't really even name any producers that have, uh, 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 what is it? What is the word? Th that that have those kind of um, established connections with other artists. Usually, it's kind of like an artist will have their little producers, and you know, like okay, uh, you know, fucking West Side's gonna have uh, what's his name? Conductor Williams, Derringer, Alchemist. Like, there's artists who have their certain few, but for you, it's kind of like that's backwards. You just have, I feel like you have all these other rappers that like kind of fuck with you and they make music with you. And I think that's dope, bro. Like, where did that even, did that start on Twitter? It all started on Twitter, man. Uh, I made my Twitter like 2016 or 17. And I just started reaching out to rappers and they gave me chances and stuff. And it was like, it was beautiful. That's dope, man. Yeah, like. You came out the gate with heavy hitters. We're talking Danielson, Smooth, um, and then what's that track? I mean, this is my shit right here. The uh, I think it's Rome Streets and Sleep Sinatra. Oh, the wreckage. Yeah, 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 yeah. That song you could literally like. That's to me. That's. One of the best, whatever year that came out, 2018 or 2017, that was literally like one of the best hip hop songs of that year, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, man, that was that was really creative of me. Uh, I found the sample, chopped it up, looped it, and like they was like, yeah, man, I'll give it a chance and stuff. And Rome rapped over it, Sleep rapped over it. And yeah, dude. Like in that case, I just like to see the color of the money. You know what I mean? It was, it was like it was. It was really a good moment, man. And how did you connect with Rome? Oh, uh, I found him on Twitter. Uh, everything's on Twitter. Uh, I found him on Twitter and I hit him up, and I wanted him to be on Making History Side A, and he gave me a verse. And did that song end up making uh making history? Yeah, it did. It's called God Glow. That's the song? That's the name of the song? Yeah. Damn, bro, that's fucking So who's on making history? Um Smooth, Daniel Sun, Sleep Sinatra, uh uh Estinac. Al Davino, uh, Rome Streets, uh, uh, I can't remember right now, but let's just name a few. Is that uh, with Nack and Davino? Was that that Pecorino Romano track? Is yeah, Pecorino Romano. How did you, you get them to like like? Did you so when you drop? With Smooth and Danielson, did you notice all these other artists coming and 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 fucking with you after that? Cause, I mean, we're gonna get into it, but like, just real real quick, is that like, did you see that happening? Like, oh, okay, like historian got the beats, like he got the beats and shit. It started happening like 2018, 2019, especially when I started to work with Bub Rock, um, dude, like they. These all wanted beats. I started selling them. I stopped making tight beats. I started making my own names and stuff. And, uh, like, it was really good, man. Like, they all gave my beats a chance. They all wanted one. And, like, it was it was a beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, um, I remember, uh, you know Travis Styles, right? Who? Chava Styles? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I, I'm at his crib one day, and he had just bought his house in uh, SB. So one day, I'm kicking it with him, and he's playing a beat, and I'm like, I'm like, this is fly right here. And um, 
it's an MF Doom type beat. And I'm, I'm like, who made the beat? He's like, oh, I don't know, some dude named the historian. And this is probably like the the end of 2017, maybe 2016, most likely 2017. But I'm like, I'm like, I gotta, cause at that point we're okay. Well, maybe this was the end of. Fuck. This was way. This was way before. Whenever the fuck it was, I remember just being like, "This fool has dope beats," and I remember just going through everything you had at that time and then just picking out whichever ones uh i liked and i don't know i don't remember if, if chava ever rapped over the beat he ever chose but that's he pretty much found you first and then kind of like that's how we started working together because like i kind of peeped your profile and and, and i think you had like you were already like you're from LA and all this stuff and I was like yeah we definitely got to work because there's not too many artists out here that do what we do exactly man and it's really just like you know me you uh Chava Mufasa it's pretty much it like that do this type of like music <laughs> it's like it's it's not even on one hand. <laughs> yeah. I understand that people think LA is like, oh, LA, LA is like, that's the mecca for music. And it is, but just not the music, the underground music that we're making. Yeah. It's super interesting because you would think LA would have a lot more artists. But when I go to, when I do my shows over here in Ontario, and I see other people's shows in LA. Everybody's still on. Everyone is on uh, the new popular shit, you know, like whether it's like some Migo shit or Future. It's it's like the 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 more the more your music sounds popular, the more kind of people gravitate towards it. And I think that just. It says a lot to artists like us because not many people are doing that. Yeah. You know, and I think it's I think it's really dope that you can just come out out of just like left field like a fucking shooting star and you just hit all the right, you know, you literally hit all the fucking like all the, the the best points, like the best rappers, like just the best everything. I feel like you you literally are like the fucking the victory lap. You're just holding the torch and you're just uh. doing laps around motherfuckers. Cause literally, I wish I could have done some shit like that. You know, I was producing before I was rapping, and I've been rapping with way longer and then I went back in and make it literally you inspired me to fucking make beats again I don't know if you knew that oh wow man thank you dog. I'm proud of that man your music is amazing man I think I remember a few of our tracks actually uh, I can't remember the names but we definitely gotta work again man I'm so down dude I'll send you some beat packs for sure man I wanna I wanna get on your new album if I can if you got a oh yeah yeah dude I'll give you a slot hell yeah I'm I'm down, uh, you know, cause just just off of the strength that like, the whole history and and, and everything like that is just I th I feel like it's overdue, you know what I mean? This is the first time we've actually talked, like kind of like face to face, and all that, which I think makes it even like more special because people, like, this is the first time I'm talking to you, but like already like how how we're connecting is just like real recognized, real bro, like in. Just, just you explain like your story, where you come from. I think that's really dope, and I think it's important that like we kind of we cultivate it and like we cherish the artistry, because a lot of people aren't doing that, man. A lot of people are out here for themselves. You'd be surprised how many people I run into, and it's just like they're like lone wolves out here. It's kind of fucked up, but yeah. Um. I, I will tell you this though. I remember buying like a pack of beats from you. This had to be like 2017. This was for sure like the end of 2017. Um, but 
I'm like, I'm like listening to the beats. I remember, um, okay, so I think Loteria was was the first song I think we ever did. Um, oh, okay. So I think it goes like, so it's like, it's uh, the sample is like, there's something happening here, and it is, doom, and it's kind of like, kind of has like, kind of like, it's just, it kind of sounds like drums and bass, but... Yeah, that ended up on Solo Five Singles to the Dark Side. And then one of the beats that you sent me, the sample was like, I had a dream. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember just, I remember being like, this is a dope beat, but I kind of don't like how the dude, how how it's like, I, I like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of was throwing. Yeah, you know what's crazy? What's going on? Now I actually remove vocals from beats now. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, oh uh, I use my my app called Wavosaur. And it literally just takes the vocals out. Yeah, it takes the vocals out. Uh, I did it for a few beats now, actually. And does it still sound good? Like, does it still sound, sound great, man? You might be able to hear the vocals like a like twenty percent, ten percent, but it still sounds perfect. That's what's up, man, because I remember playing it in front of all my homies, and this is why sometimes you shouldn't play beats around your homies, because I remember my homies were like, man, sir, what the fuck are you playing, man? man turn that shit off, man. I had it. <laughs> what the fuck is this? A fucking beat? I'm like, what? So I got clowned on for even playing the beat, which pushed me to even more to be like, okay, I'm, not just, I'm just not going to rap over it. And who raps over this fucking beat? Uncle John or Uncle whatever his uh, I don't I forgot how to say his name. Uh, yeah, me too. Dude, Uncle John or Uncle John, something Uncle like John, that. Yeah, something like that. But shout out to him. Yeah, but that actually ended up being like a big record for him. Um, yeah. And so I think that's crazy. Another another crazy record is the um, you and Fahim. I don't uh, I don't know the, I don't remember the song. I think maybe you had sent it to that one to me too. Um I'm gonna look at it. It's crazy how you don't know these songs off the bat. Like I would think you would know Yeah man, like I got like thousands of beats, man. It's so hard to remember them all. Like it's so hard to remember the names, or how they go. Like it's too many, man. That's crazy. That's know you just making fire left and right you don't even remember the fucking tracks trying to yeah. make yeah yeah you didn't send me this one so how did how did this come about oh uh, fahim gave me a chance man uh I was making beats, and I was like, yo, can you rap over a beat for me, man? And he was like, yeah, man, I got you. No charge, man. And uh, I was like, yeah, man, I sent the beat. And he, he made a music video over that shit. I was like, man, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. I think it's, you know, for me, it's kind of like once once you have a Fahim feature, that's Next door to a Makami feature, and I feel like crazy. Once, once my gets on your beats, I feel like it'll be under that. I feel like you'll have like the real because to me, I feel like Mock really um runs this underground shit. Yeah, yeah man. The closest uh, thing I got to a Makami feature was him being on a music video that I that I produced the song for. Oh, that's Gunpowder, right? Yeah, Gunpowder, me. And Danny, how did um how did that beat come about? Like whenever I see two producers on one beat, I'm like, okay, did one find the sample and one have the drums? Like, how does that how did that come about? I had the sample, he had the drums. I looped it, he drummed it. Did you see him uh produce it, or was it like, where is Danny from anyway? It, doesn't he make covers like album covers? He does, he does. He makes he makes really amazing covers now. And I don't really know where he's from, but we worked. Oh, okay. So you just send him the, the sample and he put the drums to it and send it to... to yeah. Yeah. That, that's fire, dog. What? That's on Dump Go? I think so. What? Yeah. 
This is fire. That's crazy, man. Have you sent Mod any beats? I tried to, but I couldn't find his email. Mod.comi at Gmail. <laughs> I think it's that. It might be that. Yeah, bro. How do you not know it's literally on his SoundCloud? Oh, man. I'm slow, man. How do you not, bro? I literally have, I'm literally working on beats for Mod.comi as we speak. Uh Oh, I bet they sound dope. Oh my god! Literally, I found the illest, the illest fucking loop off of like a country record. Like you know, it literally goes from fucking like far side beats to you know, woke up in the mor early in the morning, got me a cup of coffee, and all this other shit. Isn't that the best shit ever? Where you just find that that little loop. And like the whole rest of this shit is like they're never gonna find this shit. Like, who's really gonna look? Who's really gonna look up a fucking you know a country record from 1960 whatever? Like, no one's gonna find that shit. That shit is dope, and you're right. Yeah, they never gonna find that shit. <laughs> um, that's wild, man. Um, so as far as like with the loops and stuff, how come like you don't you don't have no drums like like. Do you ever put drums on your beats? I'm trying to right now. My homie Midas, uh, he's going to help me download Ableton. And I bought a drum pad. But yeah, all the years I produced, I only ever added one drum to a beat. And like, I don't know. It's like, I don't need drums. Like, I'm, like, I'm pretty talented without them. Like, I always made it work. I made several albums without them. Like... I made several skits without them. I made several shits without them. Like, it, you know what I mean? Like, it's like it's crazy. Yeah, I, I think it's really dope because you were literally, like, the only one, especially at that time, to be, like, all loops, no drums, like, drumless loops. I mean, yeah, there's been producers that fucking that have had drumless loops, but they've never said they're like a drumless producer. I feel like you were the first one, at least that I know of, to just be like, there. I don't put drums on the beats and shit. Um, and I think that's really dope because now everyone's a fucking drumless producer. You fucking, you look up uh, whatever, West Side Gun or, or, or Rock Marcy type beats in there, oh, they don't have no drums. Like it's all, it's all chops. Yeah, yeah, man, like, oh, man, my favorite chop drumless is probably Kennedy with Jay Nice. That's one of your tracks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On Supreme Back History. Uh, let, me, let me look it up. Is it on YouTube? Yeah. Kennedy. Black History. Um. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. Oh, wait. Oh, I was going to say, they don't even credit you, but it, this is a whole album you have with Jay Nice. Yeah. Um. So tell me, tell me how, did, how did this album come about? Uh, me and Jay Nice had just made Money OD, and we was like, bro, we should make an album together, man. Mm -hmm. And just recently, I sent him like 23 beats for, for uh, Supreme Black History 2. And we're going to be working on that together. Uh, Supreme Black History is a really dope album, man. I got a copy. Um, dude, like, it was my best work, man. My best beats. And, like, I was so happy. So how did you even connect with, with Jay Nice? I had him up on Twitter. Uh, I was like, yo, man, you down to do some rapping for me, man? He was like, for sure, man, I got you. And, you know, me and him are both Leos, too, so it was like we just automatically connected. Honestly, bro, 
they say Gemini's and like Virgos are like some of the best rappers, but Leos, I feel like Leos like have a lot because I don't know. I'm really big into astrology, but Leo represents like family, self-expression, artistry, the the home. You know. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a Leo too. So. Oh. oh. Yeah, Leo gang. Leo gang that don't bang. Yeah, Hell yeah. Uh, I'm not. not a, uh, I'm a Capricorn sun. I don't know if you. Re I'm like super in uh, astrology. That's why I even made you know uh, J L V S N J Levison. Yeah, dude, I love him. He's a dope producer. That's why me and him have a whole album called The Sage and the Sorcerer because the whole concept, the Sage is the Capricorn and the Sorcerer is the Scorpio. So that's why, like, like, you know, uh, it's not really about astrology, but like, um, that's really when I started like thinking about astrology, like with the music. Um, but yeah, I, I have a, uh, I'm a Leo. I don't like to say like my chart and shit, cause like what's in my chart? Cause people like fucking do like freaky shit and make a, astrology videos and weird old shit like that. But yeah. So, so with the Supreme Black History, man, how long did this, like, how long did it take? Like, was it real quick? You just sent him beats and he got it done real fast? Or what was the story? Yeah, he got it done real fast, man. Uh, I made the beats in like a week or two. Mm -hmm. I had just got out the hospital from breaking my hand. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, he was like, yeah, man, let's work on this album together, man, and. It made a whole bunch of money, man. I got so I, uh, I got I got a few records from it, uh, and it went great. Now with this album, uh, when you dig, is it solely off the internet, or are you actually getting uh, records from like record stores and shit? There's no record stores around me, so. I got to dig on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, Discogs, whatever. Uh, I dig, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So you don't actually, you've never actually, uh, um, what is it, sampled off of a vinyl? Never. Damn, bro. You know there's a place called uh, Sonido del Valle that's in East L.A., Um that's the best record shop I've ever dug into. Like, I have some of the best beats I ever made. Pretty much all the best beats I've ever made, in my opinion, have come from that record store. Do you know, we, you live in Gardena? That's not that far. Bro, that record store is closer to your house than it is my crib. I'll tell you that. I'm going to definitely go there one day, man. I want to buy a turntable and a, and a, and a, and a vinyl player. Mm -hmm. And just start sampling records finally, man. It's time. I got my Audio Technica was probably like not even 150. Record, oh. Yeah, record player was like super fucking cheap. Don't buy those. See, this is what happened. Vinyl came, became popular again. And all these fucking hipster tight jean wearing motherfucking spandex fools started buying those uh uh record players that come in suitcases like it's a suitcase you open it up and you, you play the vinyl that those are some of the shittiest record players of all time and i hope whoever owns them jumps out the fucking nearest window whether it be off the 10 story or it's just right there in your bedroom window because literally though i literally see people like with those shits and i'm like wow you just like you listen to morrissey and dye your hair pink and just go to some club or something. Like, don't even... All right. They, I'm going to just go on to something else. But, yeah, literally, um, the vinyl... Um, the vinyl I get from that store in Sonido de Valle, uh, I'll shoot you, like, the location and shit, but literally, the 45 Loop King. Like, I buy nothing but 45. They have uh, LPs, too, but do you know what a 45 is? Is it for vinyl? Yeah. Like a 45, like, vinyl player? No. Uh, well, it's not a vinyl player, but... Uh, okay, so... Because I'm about to flex on them real quick.
Oh, fuck. Hold up. And where my records at, man? Uh, I have my records. Okay, so pretty much, this is an LP, obviously. This is Monokami's Bulletproof Love. And this, this is a full... This is a full LP. This is a 12-inch full LP. Crazy. If I can find one. Okay, here they are. I keep all the vinyls I sample. I keep. And these are 45s. This is a, I think it's called 45 because they're 45 uh, centimeters or something. But they're obviously a lot smaller. And... and what is it? Um, like, uh, this is uh, this is Silly Wasn't I by Valerie Simpson. This is that sample. I don't know if you know the song by uh, 50 Cent. It's called Best Friend. Oh. Yeah, this is the, this is the, the, the fucking, um, the single that Kanye sampled. And he, I think Kanye made it. Um, but for that song, if I was your best friend, I want you around all the time. Can I be your best friend? Yeah. He's, oh, I heard that song. Yeah, he said he's just a friend. Yeah. I love 50 Cent. One of my biggest inspirations. Uh, how did I even get talking about this? With the whole Sonido de Valle, man, they all know me. Like, every time I go on there, they're like, oh, you're here. Like, because they already know I'm going to drop money. They're like, oh, okay. They go, they go, they buy a fucking box of donuts. They're like, would you like one and all this shit? Like, oh, it, man. It's a whole. Oh, it's a dope experience, man. I really encourage you to go over there and just check the vinyl out. They have the best soul section, R&B, jazz, like, whatever. It's literally, yeah. it's literally like, dope. Um, it's, it's, it's dope as fuck, man. I, I, because what it is, is, like, the internet is cool, but it's like a detached uh, uh, feeling. Like, you don't really give a fuck about the sample versus when you're in the shop and you're actually, what I put it, and you find the sample and you're like, silly, wasn't I? How come fucking this sounds familiar? And you put it on the record and you listen. It's like, ha, 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 silly, wasn't I? You're like, oh, shit, this is 50 Cent. Or fucking, or, or you go and you pick up a Michael McDonald record and it's the fucking Regulators beat, you know, it was a clear black whatever the fuck. So it's literally it's more memorable because you have the vinyl in your hand you're actually putting it on the record and you're listening to it like they look at me crazy sometimes because I'll be in there with the fucking headphones on and shit I'm hogging up the turntable. No one can even listen to records because I'm just right there for three hours straight, just one after another looking for samples. And I'll literally be like, damn. And the fucking the record guy will be like, well, what did you find? I'm like, dog, you got to listen to this. You'll listen to it and you'll be like, what the fuck am I listening to? Uh, like, gonna make a, uh, he'll be like, you're going to make a beat out of this? And I'm like, yeah, bro, what the fuck? So... This shit is bugged out, bro. Literally, it's so awesome. Bro, I actually got something to show you. What's up? Uh, let me see. Look, see? I got the Lord Juco vinyl. Uh, Ray's right. I'm on here. Uh, I got a track on here. What? Called Scarberia. And I got the Supreme Black History vinyl. Wow. They sent it to yeah. me free? Yeah, send it to me for free. Wow. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like you're holding a piece of art that you made. Like, it's like. Yeah. I want to get my first album on, on vinyl, but it's like 20 something dollars for one v piece of vinyl. I'm like, unless I go real limited, like if I only do 10 copies, you're talking about over 200, probably like 250 with shipping and everything like that. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, then I'd have to sell the vinyl for sure, at least like, I don't know, like 30 at the least. But um, that's why I never got the vinyl. I do have my own. Um, I, I did press Voodoo Love out, my, my first album, 
on CDs, but um, not that many people bought them. And that's just trash. Oh. It's trash, bro. Literally, people don't appreciate, like, people don't appreciate nothing, bro. People were literally living in the times where people, they want to fucking, you know, pop molly. They want to do fentanyl and all these dumbass drugs. And just, like, just, I don't know. I don't know. The, the whole climate, literally, people are, the, like, the underground is so far removed from people that, like, I just feel like the art is lost in this fucking limbo where people aren't even appreciating it, I feel like, in a way that they should. Yeah, dude. They got to appreciate that shit more, man, because cause it's like, this sound is only going to be around for so long, so, mm. you know what I mean? Like, you got to really show it love. Yeah. Yeah. One other topic um, I was thinking about was I see these producer producers that complain that some rappers take their beats and they don't credit them. They don't ask for permission and they get mad that they do that. And on one hand, I get it. Like, if you're not crediting a producer, that's just foul. Because yeah. that's like saying yeah. it will fuck your beat, you know, I, that's like literally saying, like, who fuck whoever made the beat. Like, just listen to me. On one hand, I do get that, but then it's also like, okay, but, like, did you get permission from the people you sample? You know? Yeah. Like, um, how do you feel about it? I actually never have. I should, though. But it's, like, it's so much work, and, like, I'm new to it, and it's, like, you know what I mean? Um... I should work on sample clearance, though. Um, I think um, I think Logic was talking about this, that one song where it's like, can I kick it? Yes, you can. Can I kick it? Yeah. Yes. So I guess the fucking, the, the people that they sample from, and I'm fucking this all up. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize to everybody out there, but the they didn't even own... This is either like either a tribe called Quest or De La, somebody like that. But they they said that they don't even own that record. Like they took a hundred percent just from them sampling it. Like they they don't even own that record. Like their own song, they don't even own their own song because they sampled from someone else. Crazy. Can you imagine? So they're making any money? They didn't they don't get nothing they don't not even when they do shows and shit if they perform that song they don't get any of that money like let's say whatever deal they worked out say okay if i do that song i need two thousand dollars they don't get shit off of that it's just straight two thousand they gotta pay because when you when you when you license when you're a licensed artist and shit like that then it's worked out on the contracts okay if you play uh fucking best friend by 50 cent whoever like if valerie simpson was like every time you perform best friend i need five thousand, and then you're not gonna get shit because he doesn't own that record he probably does own the record but what i'm saying is is like sometimes the fucking people don't give you shit like i think wow this, i think it's either bobby i uh, know bobby brown was cool but like dion warwick she hates hip-hop because so many people the sample the music that like they they literally discourage you from sampling their music by just being like okay well i own that record like if you're gonna sample my music i own that record like you don't even get to make money off of it you don't get nothing from it you know i think that's bullshit like imagine crazy man. that is bullshit man imagine if whoever you sampled trying to make a move imagine if someone was like yo historian you're a cool producer and all that but you didn't get permission from us so what's gonna happen is now that record we own that now and you're just not gonna get shit so it's like now how like how do you feel about sampling now that's like one of your biggest songs that's out there you don't even own it no more like you can't even make nothing off of it you know I would fucking cry man uh me too. dude uh me too yeah uh not all my albums I make money from so everything is cool but that shit might happen in the future man I got to start clearing samples that's what I 
I was telling my my producer NC when we did our album, I asked them, "Can you get all all the samples together so we could clear them?" Because I wanted to make an album with them where we clear everything so we could actually own the record. And he's like, "To be honest with you." I was so high when I made these or something like that that I don't even know where I sampled it from or something something funny like that. And I was like, God damn it. So that's why we didn't, because I'm, I'm starting to pl publish my music now, but I'm trying to do it the right way where I actually get the fucking, the clearance from the owners of the actual music. But Yeah. But like, we couldn't do it. So the reason why I'm not trying to publish that is because as soon as you try to own it, then then it's a clear violation of, of copy. That's copyright infringement. They could sue you. They could fucking pretty much do whatever they want with you in court because you already violated the law, you know? Wow, that's dangerous, man. Yeah. That'll ruin, that'll ruin someone's life. And also, too, let's just say, you got to be think about this. If you say, okay, Fahim, Fahim has a deal has a copyright deal with the orchard, or maybe not as the orchard, but n nature sounds or something. Let's just say, you know, he owns one of, he pays you, you know, let's just say 5,000 and fucking, you give him, you let him have the beat and then Fahim, he copyrights it and then they go after him for that sample. Now you're dragged into it because you you have the credit of the producer, so now you're gonna get hit possibly with a lawsuit along with Fahim, you know? Yeah. So it's not like yeah. you could say, Oh, okay, well, that's not my record. Like, unless you totally be like, Oh, okay, I want nothing to do with this, which is like, why would you want to do that? You know, you'd want credit, right? Yeah, dude, like you got to be careful of stuff like that because, like, you don't want to ruin your life. You don't want your songs to get taken away. You don't want them to own it. You don't want your songs to get taken down. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like the YouTube system. You know what I mean? Like, I just used the song today, uh, Slum Village Go Ladies, and it was like there's a copyright check, and I was like, yeah. shit. Yeah. You probably should. Shouldn't have said uh, who you sample. <laughs> yeah. Because some people will be like, straight snitches, bro. They'll comment on on your shit talking about, hey, that's that one sample. And it's like, why would you say the sample? If anyone ever posts or comments on my shit, what sample I sent, I'm going to fucking block them, delete them, fucking... Uh, a corrupt their IP address on the router, like oh. I'm gonna go so far to make sure you get all the way the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Um, that, that's funny as fuck. But at the same time, though, we're artists, <laughs> we're producers, we're fucking creators. So if we gotta snatch samples and say fuck it, then fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. Because I'm thinking about it in a business way. But fuck that shit, like bandit style, bandito style. You know what I mean? Exactly, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. You really do, though. So, as far as the new album, tell me, like, oh wait, hold on. Before we get into that, let me hear the. Are you talking about this uh, uh, energy? Yeah, you gotta play the other part though. What happened? Yeah, you gotta play the other part part though. Which part? The beginning? I think it's I, I think it's in the beginning. This part? Yeah. Oh shit. Fucking angry, man. Like cat. Wow, cuz he's a fucking the fuck. That's crazy, man. You have this, like, I really listen to your loops, and some of the times it's like, 
you won't listen. You won't loop it on the one. You'll loop it like either on the two or the three or the four. Do you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean. Uh, like later and stuff. Yeah, so it won't be. You did that. Um, I think did, didn't you produce? Um, was it good fella with Flash? I did actually. I think I got like three tracks on there. The um. um What's the fucking one? Uh, 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 fuck, God damn it! Let me pull it up. Shout out to Flash, man. Where's Flash been? I've been trying to contact him. I've been. I know. I think he got rid of his Twitter. He hasn't been responding to his email. I think he's a busy man. He just said fuck the whole rap shit entirely, bro. Yeah. It's crazy too because I feel like we had like a little dis discrepancy. And um, and literally, people, if you have, like, a problem with someone, not a problem, but, like, if you want to clear some shit up, don't do what I did and tweet them on Twitter. Yo, are you trying to do a song? Because <laughs> you, you don't want to describe <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you, man. And it looks like you're just trying to, you know, be weird with it. What's up, One Voice? Shout out to the homie, One Voice. Um... Yeah, you. I thought you produced the whole shit. You didn't produce everything. Nah, I produced like three tracks. Uh, God damn it! Yeah, so, so shout out to Flash, man. I reached out. I try to reach out to him and be like, "Yo," I try to be like, you know, um, I know, like, I, I didn't mean like no disrespect. If you ever felt this, if I ever, if you, if you ever felt like I disrespected you. But then, like, couldn't find him on Twitter, on Google, you know. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? What up, Eastside G's? Who's, there? who's Eastside G's? Who, who's that? Oh, he's a producer, too, man. Uh, he shows me support and stuff. He comes to my live streams. That's what's up, yo. Yeah. And, bro, we just talking about um historian produced on one of my favorite albums, uh... With Flash. Did you produce this one? No. This one? No. Yeah, I appreciate that one. I produced that one. And I produced Young Vito. This is fucking hard, guys. Yeah, yeah. This one, right? You produced this one? Yeah, that one go hard. Let me tell you something. I know exactly who you sampled right there. Not gonna what, snitch. Is it Los Terricolas? Los Terricolas. Oh, uh, uh, Los oh yeah, my bad, man. My bad. Yeah, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Uh, Terricolas, yeah. Los Terricolas. That's funny because I told my mom the same thing. I'm like, uh, uh, is that Los Terricolas? And my mom's like, Los, uh, or Los Terricolas? And she's like, Los Terricolas. That's Literally, that's the Spanish music my mom listened to when she was like a little girl or some shit like that. That's wow, they go back. That's seventies. That's seventies Spanish romantic music. Like you serenade your lady, like come here, girl, and you're like literally like just like you know that's like the slow jam type music, bro. And and you literally flipped it into like some fucking like crazy hip hop shit, bro. Yeah, and hey, man, I think. That's dope, man. Um, that shit is wild. I feel like a lot of people won't know this or, or or won't think of it like this, but a lot of people that came up around like two to twenty seventeen, I feel like it's like you, me, nephew Hesh, if he still makes music, uh, Farmer Beats, Flash, Davino, Knack, uh, uh, um. I mean, I'm not trying to, like, 
fucking group, all of us in a bubble or something, but like we were definitely around making music at the time. Uh, I definitely had lesser known music at the time for sure, but like I was still a part of this. Like I still remember when this dropped, I was in college. I still remember when you sent me those beats. I was, um, I remember listening to them like while I was in college and shit like that. And uh, yeah. We're definitely, um, I'll shoot you my email, like definitely, uh, it still hasn't changed, but, um, you know, I feel like it's just really important that we fucking, we work because I'm out here connecting with all the homies over here in the IE and the Inland Empire, and it's strength in numbers, yo, like it's just the more we connect, the more we like build I feel like this foundation because there's more homies over here that I haven't connected, tapped in with. And that's just because I'm not looking around. You know, you could be on the internet for days, but there's some people that's outside, bro, that you got to go out, you know, and tap in. Yeah, with. man. And I'm going to send you a B pack for Mr. Triggers, man. I want you on there. For sure, man. I got you, bro. I'm going to demolish that motherfucker. I don't know if you've heard my, some of my recent music. But it blows everything I've been doing. I mean, I was Woo! doing, you know, around like 2017. I thought I was the shit then. I'm really, I really wasn't shit to compare, it, like, to what I had. Like, my 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 whole style is like, it's better, it's sharper, I'm more focused. The way that I write, the fucking beats I make, it's just everything I'm I'm doing now. It's just it's just a steady increase in, in, in elevation steady up that's what surf stands for steady elevation reaching beyond serenity damn <laughs> that go hard bro holy shit when I, good shit man good looking out when i first started you know smoking every reefer bag stupid you know steadily eat, eating ravioli bitch like you know uh now it's now I have so many acronyms, Supreme Engineer, Redefining Balance Sounds, you know. Crazy, crazy man. <laughs> that shit really go together, too, man. Like, it really makes it sound dope. Yeah. Yeah, man, like Guru or like KRS-One, you know, Knowledge Reigns Supreme over nearly everybody, KRS-One, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, with your first album, tell me how different your new this so mr trigger so tell me more about that that album like what's what's that about uh it's about a modeled gun i sampled some war movies um basically uh uh i got sleep sinatra on there um um like it's about a modeled gun and it's like how it looks and shit and like you know what I mean, like it's it's basically just about like the model of it, you know what I mean, like and like appreciating like the gloss, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. So, how long have you been working on it for? Let me see. September, like a few months since September. Five months? Five, six months? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's dope, man. I feel like I feel like all albums should have like at least, you know, six to eight months, you know. Cause anything before I feel like it won't like cause the way the way I feel like especially with a nineteen track album, like that's kinda of wild. You know. Yeah, man. Uh You gonna be on there, so it's gonna be twenty now. <laughs> Yo, man, that's wild. I've been after I did Picasso and Matisse. Picasso and Matisse originally had twenty-one songs on it, and after we did, did that, me and Chava, we did that album. I said I will never do an album this long again. Fuck no, bro. Uh, people, all that rhyming and shit. Not only that, but pe people, the people, you know, like double albums, like fucking uh. uh Life After Death, Biggie Smalls and shit. No one wants to double fucking... Like, those days are gone. Like, just give me, like, 10 to 14 tracks and fuck it. You know what I mean? I feel like that's how the people... That's how it is with the people. Uh, um, you know. But with 
with the new album, um, how was it different? Uh, do you uh, do you feel like from your first album, like as far as like sampling, like do you feel like it's gotten better? It's way longer, and I got way better, mm -hmm. and it has like so many more features, so many more skits, uh, like a whole bunch of features, man. Like Young Morpheus in them, and it's like, it's like I'm just so proud of it. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Yeah, is there any is there anything else? Uh like feature I'm gonna put it up huh? like how you got the beats. Oh man, man, I was digging like a motherfucker, man. I was I was digging through so many music, like there's so much music and like and like like I was really trying to make it work, and it just worked out. The first single was J Nice Soho Vibes, and like they loved it, man. And like, dude, I can't wait to see how much money it makes, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny as hell, bro. Um, before we before we end it, um, I see you're big in the skating, man. I'm like, this dude, he. You over here in the newspaper producing, voice acting, making peanut butter jelly sandwiches, doing trade <laughs> shit. Like, what's up? Okay, how, like, how long have you been skating for? For three years now. And how do you like it? I love it, man. man. I do it every day, dude, when I can, when it's not raining and shit. And, like, I just love it, man. I can board slide, ollie, pop shove it, kick flip, heel flip. Uh, like board slide, rock the fakey, all that shit, man. You could do a dark slide. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember. I'll never forget playing Skate Three and being like, "All these tricks I'm doing, I could never do in real life, bro." Ah oh, man, man, you'll get there one day. All you gotta do is practice, man. I'll skate with you one day, dude. I know. I don't even skate, man. I'll never forget when uh. My homie, he brought his bamboo board, and I remember standing on it, and literally, the my feet and the board touched the ground, and the wheels were in the air. And he was like, "Get the fuck out of my board!" <laughs> <laughs> I was dying, bro. Literally, I can't skate for shit, but like, I used to be really big. Um, I used to weigh like three hundred and thirty-six pounds, so. Oh, bro, I'm trying to lose weight right now, dude. I gained so much weight. Oh, really? Because my mental, because my mental illness and shit. Like, uh, I weigh like 246 right now. I used to weigh 200. I used to weigh 190. I used to weigh 180. I used to weigh 170. And I'm working on losing weight right now. Two apps that that because I lost 80 pounds. I'm 255. Ooh. Yeah. Two apps that, that helped me lose weight, like, fast was Weight Watchers and Pokemon Go. Oh, oh. I'm super, Pokemon Go. Super big in a Pokemon Go. Yeah. Bro, I got to play that one day. I played it a few times. I literally just, they have, like, annual events around the world. I just came back from Las Vegas. I did an event over there. 25,000 people were in that motherfucker, bro. Hell yeah, man. That shit was wild, bro. Um, but yeah, like, like um, so, so with skating and shit, uh, like, who's, who's a, who's a, like, who do you look up to? Like, I can't skate for shit, but I love, obviously, Tony Hawk School, but like, Chad Muska, Rodney Mullen, uh, um, What's his name? Burnquist. I forgot that fool's first name. Uh, Mike Valley. Old school. Yeah. You know? Dude, I look up to Cater Sila, Ben Margera, mm -hmm. Rodney Mullen, Paul Rodriguez, Chad Muska, uh, Jerry Sue, um, and a few more cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's... Uh, what's so funny is I used to dress like I used to dress like fucking like, like half a skater and half a gangster. People didn't know what <laughs> was going on because 
I would have, that actually sounds dope. Like, cause I, I would have, like, I would have, have the fucking the pro club tee, cargo shorts, with the fucking long white socks, long black socks, and then like low top bands and shit. So. Oh yeah. I look like a fucking like like a gangster with a skateboard or something like that. I'll never forget like my. My mom would always be like, why do you got to dress like that? Like, do you feel like, who do you think you are? Like, do you do you just want to, like, intimidate people? And it's like, no, like, this is how we dress. Like, literally, I just dress, like, how all my homies dress. Like, and we all dress, like, fucking, like, we would, it looked, looked like we would get on a skateboard with two knives in our pocket, a sack of weed in the sack, you know what I mean? And a paint yeah. in the back pocket. So, uh yeah, that was just a, a quick trip down memory lane for me. But um, usually I like to leave leave off with a, a message, um, you know, like my mess, like the last message I did was like, you know, write down your goals, what you want to do, go after your dreams, don't let nobody stop or, or prevent you from achieving your goals. Because at the end of the day, it's all about well, like, you and and you striving for success so like if you could leave the people with a message what would it be keep digging skate voice act do gig your grades <laughs> respect your grandma <laughs> uh, and uh and smoke weed avidly man hell yeah avid avid weed smokers unite i've been sober for like over a year <laughs> But I've been I've been sober for about a week. <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. Um, but we're gonna we gonna end it off right here. I would like to thank you. Uh, this was a this is honestly the best the best episode for me, like the biggest like the historian on the God's Hour episode eighty nine. We got the historian. This was a great this was a great show, bro. I would like to thank you um uh, for you know taking the time out of your day. And being on the program, bro. For sure. And don't forget, man, I'm sending you that beat pack. I'm going to shoot you my, my email right after we get, we get off of this. Uh, All right, I'm going to so. send you the, the, the record store, and then I'll shoot you my email. We're going we gonna to work, bro. For sure, man. All love, bro. One love, man. This is the God's Hour. Peace, bro. Peace, brother. Later. All right.